This episode is brought to you by Martin, Michael, and Jim, this week's newest patrons. I know the last episode was $60,000 boats, and genuinely I tried to find boats for 70 grand, but really there isn't much for 70,000 that you can't get for 60. So today we're actually gonna make a $20,000 leap and we're gonna go right up to 80 grand. And I think if you've got 80 to spend on a sailboat, you probably also have some wiggle room. So it's gonna be a loose 80 grand. This week on Everything You Need to Know, the $80,000 sailboat. Guys, I've been swamped this summer with sort of side jobs, helping people shop for boats and buy boats and sell boats. I think in a past life, I might've been a boat broker. And more recently, I've been actually teaching people how to sail on their own boats, uh, including Navionics lessons and how to trim sails and tack and jive and that kind of stuff. So it's been pretty cool because it's kind of like paid travel. Um, I've also been asked to do a few deliveries of boats, which I'm contemplating. If I decide to do it, it means more ocean sailing and you can bet I'll be taking you guys with me for the videos and the adventures that we're sure to have. But suffice it to say, I've been lacking in time I can spend working on projects on Lady K. But we're going to go for a boat day this Saturday and I've invited patrons and I want to invite any of you that happen to be nearby the Canadian side of Lake St. Clair. Saturday, August 13th, we're going to take Lady K out. If there's no wind, we'll barbecue and we'll go swimming and we'll drink beer. Uh, if you want to get involved in that, let me know on uh, Lady K's Instagram page or Facebook. $80,000. That's a nice target for a lot of folks who I talk to for something that they can go spend weekends on down at the marina or the yacht club, but also something that they can take for extended trips should they want to do that. And $80,000 is an interesting number because at that price point, the market is completely full of these older style, low production number sort of world cruisers, if you're into that sort of thing. And really, they're everywhere all over North America. We're talking about boats like this one. This is a 1984 Hans Christian, a 38T. Hans Christian is known as a staple of what a comfortable, ultra well-built world cruiser should be. This is the bar, this is the measuring stick, nothing else. They're heavy, they're super thick, they're ultra luxurious in their era. They're boats that are specifically designed to sail the world seas. And the 38T gives you all the comfort and space you'd expect from a world cruiser in an old world double ender kind of style. If last week's island packet was the battleship, then this thing is the carrier group. The 38T is a cutter with a huge sail plan aimed right square at crossing the ocean. In all the arguments that you see on the internet as to like, what is a blue water boat and what isn't, this is the measuring stick. This is the guide as what you need to have to officially be a blue water cruiser that all other boats are compared to. Traditional cruisers swear by the Hans Christians and many of them won't sail on anything else. Now the downside to cruising on one of these or owning one of these is of course the upkeep of a much older boat with more wood than a rainforest. And in, of course it's a design from the past so you shouldn't expect modern amenities like a sugar scoop or anything like that. And you get limited space for solar panels and dinghy davits and arches and things like that. But they do lend themselves really well to self-steering mechanisms. To spend your 80 grand on this particular kind of boat, you really have to do want this kind of boat. It's so unique in today's market that only a small subset of us cruisers would actually want to own one, which kind of sucks because they're beautiful boats. But compared to what else is out there in the same price point, I mean, it's worth looking at this thing because it really is the definition of what a proper cruising boat should be. Our next boat that shows up at 80 grand is one people have been asking for a lot for a long time around here. And it didn't start to show up until now. And mind you, at 80 grand, this is going to be sort of the low rent versions of this boat. So if you want a full keel, ocean going boat with over 30,000 pounds to sort of just push the ocean out of the way, as you sail along, and a boat that carries 200 gallons of diesel. In 1974, you could buy yourself a brand new West Sail 42 for the tidy sum of $130,000, which doesn't sound like much, but it's 1974. In today's money, that's over $750,000. And that near million dollar price tag was for a good reason. The West Sail 42 
was hand laid fiberglass 12 layers thick. The top of the boat was cored with half inch plywood and when they were done all the glass work they would let it sit there for a month to make sure no imperfections found their way into it. The West Sail 42 was aimed specifically at couples who wanted to go world cruising in the lap of luxury in 1974 and with style and room inside to have the whole family on board for extended voyages if you want to. We need to do a whole episode on the West Sail 42 because this boat is that important. The West Sail gives you the ability to weather anything you're ever going to find yourself in with confidence and the cabin gives you the space to do it comfortably with people on board. This one has heat and it has laundry machines on board and it's seen both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans by way of the Panama Canal. It's actually sitting in Rhode Island right now for sale. Now, like I said, though, this is the bottom dollar for one of these boats. So if you're into sort of an older style center cockpit boat that we see a lot of at this price point, this one is actually king of them all. The West Sail 42 is it. It's the one you want. These guys at West Sail mastered the aft cabin while Beneteau was still making dinghies. If your goal is to cross oceans and you worry about the integrity of the newer production style boats uh, being able to actually make the trip, or if you just want something that sort of has a little laugh when Neptune gets angry, the West Sail 42 is probably a boat you should be looking at. And not only do you get that luxurious aft cabin, but also huge access to the engine room and a tool bench to handle repairs while you're underway. Now she may not be the best looking boat, but she is an absolute tank. And this example definitely has a lot of ocean crossings left in her. Lady Key Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make this channel possible. I really couldn't do it without you guys. A big thank you to every patron who is helping me do this right now. If you like this channel and you want to help out, please consider becoming a patron. Now, if something more modern than a West Sail 42 suits you better, um, you can start to get into some bigger floating condo style boats. See last week's episode for the definition of that. And, and at around the 80 grand mark as well. Here's an example of an early Beneteau production boat. Now this is a mid 90s 440. So that's a 44 footer that gives you everything you'd expect from the name Beneteau. This is a very wide and roomy boat meant to island hop the Caribbean with tons of space and comfort, but it also sails very, very well. You get all the Beneteau-ness of it and with the huge wide saloon and huge galley that I could cook four course meals in. You get the great layout with the center line V-berth you can actually get in and out of on either side and you get a split aft cabin for the guests to sleep in. This thing really is a great boat to head south in. It even already has solar panels and a wind generator, albeit both look a little bit dated and small. Uh, they need to be immensely upgraded for any reasonable amount of power you want to generate, but the mounting is already there. The wiring's already there. I think what sells this boat truly is the space in the cabin and all the comfort that you're going to get. And while I would certainly take a look at it, what hurts it is that it's a 1994 model. So 80 grand might be a little steep. Um, it is a 44 footer though. So you get the space. Um, I think maybe it's more of a 65 or so thousand dollar boat right now. Catalina, of course, has to make an appearance at 80 grand um, with the first showing of the Catalina 42. This is of course a Mark one and at this price, but it still is a very capable and comfortable cruiser. This one even comes with a couple of flimsy solar panels on the roof. This is a split aft cabin model, the same as the Beneteau, and this is the one with the Pullman berth up front on the port side. And some people actually really like these because it gives you a massive head with a big shower instead of a V berth, which a lot of people swear by. The downside, of course, is you don't get the sort of walk around center line bed up front, which some people are okay with giving up. Um, I, I kind of want the walk around bed instead. The Mark 142 is a great boat with tons of space for another mid 90s early production style boat. And the Catalinas are very, very nice. They're well done, they're well finished, and they sail extremely well. It's very capable of island hopping and lake sailing and anything else you might want to do around there. I would not hesitate to take this boat to the Caribbean. Other than the age of this Catalina 42, the only thing really wrong with it, and there is one major problem with this boat being a Catalina 42 Mark I, and that problem is the Catalina 42 Mark II, which of course you won't see at this price point just yet, but we will talk about it at some point. Now we've talked about the Morgan Out Island 41 in previous episodes, uh, and we started to see them show up at the cheaper price point, but of course, 
That was for sort of low rent, less quality examples of these. 80 grand is where we start to see really nice out islands that are well equipped and well cared for. Here's an example of an out island from 1981. It's sitting in California and ready to go cruising again. These out islands were the darling of the charter industry before these three to four cabin production boats sort of took over in the 90s. And for good reason, these were designed to be the easiest to use, roomiest, most livable 40 something footers in the world. And they succeeded. The out island 41 became known as the most popular over 40 foot sailboat ever made. And you can find examples of this boat all over the world. These are another great example of a full keel, shallow draft Caribbean boat meant to get you there in pure comfort with the center cockpit. And adding an enclosure to a center cockpit gives you a whole new room in the boat to enjoy. And take it from me, makes a world of difference when you need to make some miles, but it's pouring rain outside. The last boat we're gonna to talk today is just starting to show up at this price point. And it's a great example of something more modern that you can take to the islands in a huge amount of comfort and good speed, but some of you aren't gonna like it. But I can't help you if you have hate in your heart. Welcome to the first big hunter that we've seen so far. And by big, I mean the over 40 feet club, which is where hunter really shines. This is the hunter 410. And there's actually a couple examples for sale right now at this price point. And the 410 gives you all the hunteriness that you'd expect for 80 grand. Now you get things like the B&R fractional rig, which means you get a smaller jib, but a much larger mainsail, which some say handle better than the more traditional big jib, small main arrangement that you might be used to. And with this rig, you never really have to sail downwind with the main because you, you kind of can't because the spreaders are raked back because there's no backstay. I don't like that part. But being a hunter, you also get a thousand port lights to make sure it's always daytime in the cabin, which I kind of tease a little bit, but I tease to make a point. Port lights are nice. Port lights are amazing. Port lights make the inside of the boat a nice place to be, a nice place to live. Port lights sell boats. You also get a vast, and I mean vast, amount of space inside the main saloon with room to almost run, run around, let alone live the day-to-day -day life. And in last week's episode, the battleship versus floating condo thing we did last week, I made a point. If 95% of the time, you're just gonna be living on the boat or working on the boat, and only 5% of the time you're gonna be sailing, all this boat kind of makes sense. You also get a shallow draft keel for island hopping and hanging out in Florida, which I think is probably this boat's natural habitat. And let's not forget, this is a 41 foot boat. You can still single hand it and it'll still fit in just about any marina you might wanna visit. Now, yes, it's a hunter and no, I would never intend to cross an ocean on this boat. It was made to be comfortable and easy to live on while visiting some of the most beautiful places in the world. And to be honest, one of these in good shape for 80 grand is kind of a steal. What the 80 grand is actually buying you is the freedom to go cruising right now today with a vast amount of space and comfort to make it easy to live with and less irritating on the day to day than a smaller sort of tighter boat with B. It gives you sailboat life in every way in the pure space to really enjoy it for 80 grand. This boat is hard to argue with. That's it for this week, guys. Obviously I've been branching out into sort of teaching people how to sail on their boats, learning navionics and trim and all that kind of stuff. If that's something that you'd find value in, apparently, I'm cheaper than most people are. Drop me a line. I'll see you guys next week. Until then, keep the heavy side down.